The door's being shut. You know, sometimes in our life, we get into situations, not of our own makings, but times in our life, the devil seems to have us shut into a place to where it seems like there's no hope. There's no way out. The only hope that we will have is, 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 is Jesus Christ. But, you know, sometimes we get in those situations and we feel like we have no hope. And, you know, that's what we're talking about this morning, the doors being shut. You know, as I said, have you ever been in a situation in your life where it seems like all doors and avenues of help are gone? Help, it looks like all help is gone. Doctors are giving you up. Financial institutions says you're not getting any money. You know, your brother-in-law or whoever you used to borrow money from, they, they don't answer the phone anymore when you call. You know, you've lost your job. You, you, they're, they're, the, the, the unemployment has run out. Hope seems to be gone. But I'll tell you what. In the face of all hopelessness, Jesus can walk through that door. When the door's being shut, when the door's being shut, and it seems like you are in a room where there is no handles to get out on the inside. It seems like the devil has you in checkmate, and you have no hope. You are without hope. But let me tell you, my friend, even though this world and the devil try to make you feel like you are hopeless and without hope, Jesus Christ has given us hope. Amen? A situation where it seems like life and the adversary of your soul have succeeded in closing off all possible help. You don't have no help. And it seems like the situation is hopeless. You know, your faith has become so weak and you feel you are at the mercy of this cruel world. You know, a lot of times we'll get in that place where it seems like the devil has us cornered. Whatever the situation might be, you know, you know Jesus can walk into that room and situation wherever you are. He don't need any doors. He can make a, he can walk right through the walls. You know, we're going to talk about a situation here with the disciples. You know, they were, they were, all their hope was gone. We're going to talk about that here in, in um, John chapter 20, about how it seemed like all hope was gone. The disciples did not have any more hope. Their hope in Jesus, the one who he thought he was going to set up an earthly kingdom. They didn't truly understand this Jesus. And they thought he was going to set up an earthly kingdom. But you know, here he was crucified. He was dead in the grave. All hope was gone. Here they were in a room. Doors being locked and shut in there for fear of the Jews. And they thought that they were going to be uh, take the next ones to be put upon the cross and destroyed. Uh, but yet, there is hope. Jesus can walk into that situation wherever you are. You know, like I said, friend, let me be the one to tell you. There's still hope against all odds. When you're still breathing, and even if you're not breathing, you know, Jesus, can, Jesus has been known to bring people back to life. Let me tell you something right now. You know, we're not, we're not in this life to see how long we can live. We're not in this life, you know, God's not keeping us in this life to patch us up, to put a band-aid on us, to keep us continually going on indefinitely. You know, God's purpose is to try to get us to heaven. Let me tell you something, the time of prayer, and I've mentioned this, and it bears repeating the time of prayer, and I say, God, why didn't I see a whole lot of people getting, getting healed? You know, and God spoke to me, and he said, and he said, spoke to me, he said, he said, I'm not in the business of patching people up and keeping them indefinitely upon this earth. He said, I'm in the business of trying to get people to heaven. Now let that sink into your spirit a little bit. God's not in the business. You know, here we're so worried about we say they saved the life. They saved a friend. Friend, if someone was saved from drowning or someone was saved from, from they had a cardiac arrest and somebody resuscitated and brought them back, they're going to die again. But see, we don't have to be sick and anemic and afflicted and diseased and that in order for God to take us. God can take us. He promised He can take us in perfect health. But see, it's the devil's job to corrupt your mind and your thinking to believe that you have to be sick or it's old. You know, you have to accept this. You know, you're old and, you know, and you had sickness in your family and you had cancer in your family or you had diabetes in your family. You know, the Bible says the kingdom of God suffers violent, but the violent take it back by force. You know, you have to get violent back with the, with the devil with God's word and his truth. You know, faith is weak. No wonder Jesus said, when I return, will I find any faith? He, he has doubt in himself that he's going to find any faith when he returns. You know, you look around, you can't hardly find two people that can agree on anything spiritually, positively, and receive from God. Because faith is weak. We're so much into the entertainment uh, in our churches nowadays, and, 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 and we'd rather have meals after church 
instead of having prayer at the altar. Friends, you're never going to get an answer from God when you're more concerned about filling your belly than you are filling your soul with the Word of God and truth and reaching God. I like to have fellowship, but I'll tell you what, I like to fellowship and tabernacle with God more than I like to have that fried chicken. Amen? Jesus has come to overcome. He hasn't just come. Jesus came to this world to overcome. He's to overcome every overwhelming situation that the devil has brought into our life. He is not limited. He's not limited in his ability to anything. You know where he's limited? It's where we limit him. When we say there's no more hope. When we say the doors are shut and locked. And there's no, no way the devil's got us locked in. There's no way. There's no way we're going to get any help or situate for, for this situation. That's where we limit God. And, you know, where your faith drops off, I mean, where you drop off with believing in God, that's where your faith drops off, and that's where you stop off believing. If you can't believe God, if you can only, if you can only believe God for this down here, you can't believe Him for that. You know, a lot of times, a lot of people can believe for a lot of things when they're not in the situation. You know, but when you get in the situation, a lot of times you can't believe it. You know, first, people use their first line of defense as running to the doctors, and, and instead of praying, prayer should always be your first line of defense. You should pray. The Bible says to, to call the elders of the church. You know, sometimes we can't find elders in the church anymore that know how to pray. They're telling you well, what the doctors say. And, and, you know, the Bible says anoint them with oil. Pray the prayer of faith. And it says God will heal them, raise them up. And if they've committed any sins, then God will forgive them. We don't have that many people nowadays that stand behind the sacred desk that preach that way and believe that way anymore. Faith is weak. But God has come into that room. He can come into that room when the door's being locked, just as he did for these disciples. I'm going to read here. It says, you know, in, in, in John chapter 20, as Jesus' disciples felt all hope was gone, Jesus was dead. And the devil had them locked in behind closed doors for fear of the Jews. I'm going to read starting at the 18th verse here. You know, it talks about where Mary Magdalene, you know, she'd already she'd had an encounter with Jesus. You know, he'd already rose. But here the, here the disciples, they're in the room. They're, they got the doors locked. And as a matter of fact, uh, they're they not even answering the door if anybody comes in the door. The doors are locked. All hope is gone. They don't feel like they have any hope. Their hope was in Jesus, and he's dead, and he's buried in the, in the tomb right now. But they didn't know that their hope had just risen. Mary Magdalene, at the 18th birth, it starts off, we're talking about, she'd already, just, she'd already met him. She'd seen him. She didn't know who he was, thought he was the gardener. You know, but yet, she came to Jesus and said, go tell the boys that I'm going to do what I said I'd do. I was going to do. You know, if you found a promise in God's word, he'll do what he said he would do. If he said, I'm the Lord that healeth thee, he'll do what he said he'd do. And in the 18th verse, says, Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he was spoken these things unto her. Then the same day at the evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, the doors were shut, where the disciples were, they were assembled in fear, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. Now that's what God wants to do. That's what Jesus wants to do. He wants to speak peace unto your troubled soul. He wants to bring, speak peace to that situation where the devil has you fretting in fear and that all hope is gone. And he's got you locked into that room and you have no way out. He's got you backed against the wall and you don't have any hope. God wants to speak peace to that situation. He's just wanting you to believe. He's just wanting you to walk upright and holy before Him and say, Lord, is there anything in me that's unlike you, that you are displeased with, that, that, that's hindering me from receiving from you? You know, sometimes we're our worst enemies. You know, sometimes we can't believe God for things because sometimes we build a wall between God and ourselves through our, through our sins and our transgressions and our unbelief. You know, the Bible says that... Uh, they, 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 those that uh, he says are, we can hear from God so when our prayer condemns us when our, when our life condemns us not said so then can we be the ones that can re receive from God when our life doesn't condemn us or doesn't convict us you know and uh, the 21st and it said when he, when he had so said he showed unto them his hands and his side you know Jesus had just walked through the door through the wall or through the doors and the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus unto them again, Peace be unto you as my Father sent me, even so send I you. He's, he's, he's empowering them. He's saying, he said, now your faith is stirred. He said, what? He said now you've seen me. And, and what I've said is true. Now you believe it. He said, go out. He said, I'm going to have you send you, and I'm going to have you minister and preach this gospel, this uncompromised gospel to the world. He said, we're going to get something started. That's why I'm here standing behind this pulpit. Because one of those disciples told somebody, 
and they believed, and someone else told somebody, and somebody else told somebody else, and went on through the eons of ages, and, it, and someone got to my parents, got to my mother, and uh, breathed the Spirit of God into them, into their life, and, uh, and, uh, and, it breathed, and she, through ministering, and mother, uh, going to church, and the old-time Pentecostal minister breathing into my life, and that's why I'm preaching today this uncompromised word that you don't hear too much of anymore today. And, it's, and Jesus said, after he talked, he said, and when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. And then he goes on to say, Whosoever sins ye remit, they're remitted unto them. And whosoever sins ye retain, they're retained. It said, But Thomas, one of the twelve called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. And the other disciples uh, therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. Told Thomas. When Thomas came, he said, We've seen the Lord. Thomas said, You guys are nuts. He said, It's still vivid. I've seen, I seen him die. He said, I stood behind that rock and watched that Roman soldier thrust that spear uh, into his side. I watched the blood gushing water gushing out of that. He's dead. Don't tell me he's not, that he's alive. He goes, Thomas, the, the other disciples were there, and here comes Thomas. But he said, he said except I shall see in his hands those prints of the nails, and put my finger into the prints of the nails, thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. You know what he was saying right here? He was saying, unless I see the results, the end results, I ain't going to believe nothing. Let me tell you something. I want you to hear this right now. A lot of times before you receive anything from God, it's going to get worse before it gets better. You're going to have to believe. You know, unlike Thomas, you're going to have to believe what believe more in God's word than what the doctor says or what the banker says or what your, your employer says or what someone says. There ain't no hope. Their hope's all gone. You're going to have to believe what God's word says more than what, what man says. You've got to put your, your trust not in the arm of flesh but in God. David said, I looked to the hills where cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord. And, and, you know, and after eight days again, now remember, eight days went by. You know, here, here Thomas said, I ain't going to believe it. I don't believe it. He said, unless I see him, unless I see him raised, risen, put my hands, what he was, in other words, what he was saying, he's saying, I ain't going to believe any of it. Ain't true, never happened. You guys are nuts. And they just put it plainly. And, and it says, after eight days again, his disciples were with, within and Thomas with them. And then, then came Jesus. It says, the doors being shut. Jesus doesn't need any door. Doesn't need any any help. I thank God for doctors. I thank God for any help that we can get on this earth. But I'll tell you what. When all hope's gone, friend, I'll tell you what. Jesus needs to be the first line of defense, and he needs to be the end of the line of defense. When all hope's gone, Jesus don't need. Beyond when there is no hope left, Jesus can walk into that situation where it is and speak just like he says, peace be unto you. That's what he wants to do. Then said he to Thomas, reach hither. Thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither my thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. And he said, Hear me, I want you to hear this. He said, Blessed are they that have not seen, and yet have believed. What Jesus is saying is, Blessed is those that have not seen the answer, yet they believe. When you stand upon God's eternal word, God never fails. We have to stand upon God's eternal word. And when we stand upon His word, God will never fail. You know, unbelief, fear, and lack of understanding were the doors that Satan used to bind the disciples. They had unbelief. They had fear. And they had lack of understanding. We have a lot of that today in our churches. We have a lot of that sitting on our pews. We have a lot of that standing behind the sacred desk. You know, we are not, we are no different today. If the devil can just get you to fear and believe all hope is done, he has you where he wants you. He's got you against the wall. You don't have any hope. But when Satan seems, when, when, but when it seems like there's no hope or no way out and all doors and avenues have for deliverance seem to be gone, you have been told all hope's gone. It's all hope. They called hospice in. They called in the courts for bankruptcy. You know, they, they called in the, the, uh, uh, the uh, paddy wagon to take you away. Their mind's gone. All hope's gone. 
Let me tell you something. Beyond hope, Jesus wants to walk into the situation and speak peace, be still, and turn things around for you. Amen? You have to believe it. Jesus didn't believe because he... Thomas, excuse me. Thomas didn't believe because he didn't see Jesus walk through the door, the closed doors. He didn't, you know, Thomas didn't believe because he didn't, he didn't see Jesus walk through the closed door the first time those, those, those disciples were gathered. He didn't believe. But, you know, Jesus said, it shall be better for those who believe without seeing. He said, it's going to be better for those who believe without seeing. Jesus, he, you know, we, we have to believe. At, and, you know, a lot of times when Jesus comes, it's in the darkest hours when things seem the worst. Hello? It says, when you call out upon him, that's when he comes. Amen. Many people are just like Thomas. They don't believe unless they can see first. You know, if you ever going to receive from God, you're going to have to believe first. Then you receive. You know, we got this thing backwards. We want to, you know, somebody said, well, boy, am I going to shout when I, when, I get the, when I get the blessing or when I get the answer. Friends, you better shout. The Bible says, shout, and he'll give the enemy into your hands. Shout, and he'll set the captive free. Woo! He says, shout. And he'll set the captive free. He'll give the enemy into your hands. You know, we gotta shout. We gotta learn this thing. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta get this thing in perspective according to God, not according to what the world says. Amen. Now hear me. Don't count on others to stand with you. It's nice if you have church family or other people that will stand with you in prayer and faith and trust. You know what? But you know, you're you're gonna have to learn to stand alone. If you're going to receive a miracle from God, it's hard to find people that true. They might go with you so far. People will have, they, they, you know, well-meaning people will have pity on you, but pity never accomplishes anything in the realms of faith. If you're going to have to, re if you're going to receive anything from God, you're going to have to learn to stand alone. Think about this: Jesus had to stand alone. You know, one day he had he, multitudes of days. He had people. In, Enthroning him, enthroning him. They're all over him. They, 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 they the crowds, they couldn't keep the crowds away. But, you know, people are like, like this one day, it's, well, that's why I like in these elections and such. And one day people, they're for this person, next day for that person, they're for this person, they're for that person. Because the Bible says people are, they're, they're tossed to and fro with the wind. And he says, people that are tossed to and fro with their belief, he says, those people will receive nothing from me. He says, you've got to be established and standing upon the eternal rock of God's holy word. Christ Jesus. Amen. You know, people will pity you. They'll have pity on you. But a lot of times when you try to break loose from that, they, they don't want, you know, they'll, they'll, people can feel sorry for you. But we got to go beyond that. Jesus went beyond pity and feeling sorry. He went into empathy. He knows, the Bible says he knows how you feel. He knows the hurt, the pain that you're feeling right now. The Bible says he's touched with the feelings of our infirmities. He knows. He doesn't. Hear me. I want you to hear this. I want you to get this in your spirit. Jesus doesn't just know a facsimile of what you, you feel. He knows the exact pain. He felt that. The Bible says that when he was nailed upon that cross, the Bible says when the, when the sky grew dark, and it says, the Bible says all sins of the world were cast upon him, past, present, and future. You know, all feelings. So he, the Bible says he's touched. He's the high priest right now. He's up there pleading our case. He's pleading your case. If you call upon him to be that, the Bible says that all sicknesses, diseases, and infirmities, everything, all our feelings, past, present, future, were cast upon him. He doesn't know one like that. He knows that exact same feeling, that, that pain that you're feeling right now. So he knows how to touch the Father for you. He's touched with the feelings of our infirmities. He knows how to touch. You just have to engage him. You know, the Bible says you have to engage him as your, your spiritual attorney, so to speak. And come to him and say, Lord, I believe. Help, like the man did, like the man came. He said, Lord, he had brought his son. His son was a lunatic. He said, my son, off to my son, phones at the mouth, and he throws himself in the fire and says, there's, there's, there's something in him. There's an evil spirit in him that wants to kill him. And, 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 and Jesus said, if thou can believe, all things are possible. And the man came to him and he said, well, I believe. And Jesus just stood there and looked at him. And the man says, Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. What the man was saying, he was saying, Lord, I want to believe. It's hard for me to believe. I'm in this flesh. My flesh says contrary. My flesh says different. I see, I live with this boy every day. I see what's going on. I see what the, and you don't know all the pain. Yes, he does know all the pain and suffering you're going through. You know, 
Jesus said, if thou can believe. And the man, the man just, he, he got a spark, just a little tiny spark. You know, a little tiny spark can kindle a great fire. He got just a baby little spark, and that's all Jesus needed. Then Jesus reached out and, and touched that boy. And that boy, the Bible says he fell down as one dead, but yet and gave and, 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 and wallowed for a while and said and gave up those evil spirits that were in him. And, and then he gave that boy to his father. You know, that's what Jesus wants to do. He just wants to hear us say, Lord, I want to believe. I'm having a hard time believing. Lord, help my unbelief. Help me, Jesus. Help me to believe. I want you to step into this situation for me. Now I'm getting a little beside myself. You know, sometimes my wife says, you get a little excited. You know, some people don't understand it. But I'll tell you what, when you feel this thing, when you get touched by the glory of God, you begin to feel this thing. If I don't feel it, you ain't going to feel it either. Hello? Amen. You know, we need to believe this. You know, God is not moved by anything but our sincere desire to please Him and believe His Word. You know, that's what, that's what God, that's what God is moved by, our sincere desire to please Him. You know, a lot of times people, a lot of times people only call upon Him when they need help. A lot of times. You know, and other than that, say, okay, we'll see you later. I've heard stories about people where they just... Uh, you know, when they get into a trouble in a situation, they'll call upon him. But other than that, they, they, you know, they don't know him. He, he's just, he's like a genie in a lamp. Poof, what do you want? You rub it. Poof, what do you want? Poof, what do you want? When the situation's over, bye, see you later, until next time. You know, and God, God wants to have a relationship with us. He wants to fellowship. He wants to tabernacle with us. You know, if you don't understand that, friend, you're in trouble. You're doomed to spend eternity in hell and, and in this world. I don't care what church you've got your name written on or, or, or where you go to church or what role you have your name on. You can have every, your name on every role here from here to Jerusalem and still split hell wide open. Friend, God wants to read. That's not what's saving you, having your name on a church book. What's going to save you is having your name on the Lamb's book, friend. You know, God is not, like I said, God's not moved by, 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 by anything but our sincere desire. Hear me. Faith is the only thing that moves God. Faith. We can't move God any other way. Now, I want you to hear this. I want you to hear this real quick, real good. Prayer is the key to heaven. A lot of people pray. I have people I know that, I, I mean, I don't want to be critical or judgmental. I know according to their life and that, that they're not saved, but yet they say they pray. Hear me. Prayer. You know, you can pray all you want. God says he don't give an ear only to those prayers. From those that are saints, those are those you know, so, you know, he'll hear a sinner's prayer when he call upon him and say, "Lord, God's not him." You know something? I thank God that he that, that, that God's merciful and he heard my prayer at times. You know, he's not obligated to to a sinner at anything. He's obligated to his saints, to those who've called upon his name, to ask for repentance, ask him to come into their life, to help change and transform. You know, let me tell you something. Hear me. Prayer is the key to heaven. You might have the key, but I'll tell you what. But faith is that which unlocks the door. You gotta have that which unlocks the door, friend. You might you might have prayer, but which is the key, but you gotta have the faith to unlock that door to that situation which you're in. You know, Jesus always comes in the darkest hours. When the door is being shut and all hope is gone, that's when Jesus comes. In the darkest hours, when all hope is hope is gone and the door is being shut, when everyone says it's too late. When they've given up on you, it's too late. That's when Jesus comes. Don't give up on Jesus just because men have given up on you. Amen. Jesus said, believe only. That's what he told them. He said, believe only. And it's shall. talking about the situation we're going to read here real quick about Jairus. And, it, 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 and Jesus told him to believe only when, when people were telling him it's, it's too late. And it shall be so unto thee in spite of what everybody else says. You know, in, and uh, let me turn real quick here. In Mark chapter 5, verse 22. It says, And behold, there cometh one of the rulers, the synagogue, Jairus by name, and when he saw Jesus, he fell down on his feet. Then that's what you're going to need to do. You're going to need to humble yourself and fall down at Jesus' feet to receive from Jesus, and you're going to stop him. Friend, if you don't humble yourself before him and become as broken, you know, he'll, you'll never stop him. In the 34th verse, and it said, And he said unto her, he's talking about in this situation, in between here, uh, where, where, where Jairus came and he talked he talked to, to Jesus. He fell down on his feet and he told him the situation where he had a daughter at home and, and she was unto death, at the point of death. And then while Jesus was preparing to go with him to minister to the daughter, here comes this woman with this issue of blood. You know, the devil always seemed to, even though she had a need too. 
But you know, the devil will try to use any hindrance he can to try to stop people, to, to, you know, to try to hinder along the way. Even if you've got to use well-meaning people, he'll do that, to try to hinder your faith. But anyway, you know, the story was, is this woman, she came, and she had an issue of blood. And you know the story of how, how uh, Jesus healed this issue of blood. And then he said in the 34th verse, and then he said, and he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace, and be whole of thy plague. And then he continues, goes, While he yet spake, this is the point I want to get at. I don't want to get into that story about the woman. And it says, While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house, Certain which said, he said, thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master? It's too late. She's dead. Forget it. Don't trouble Jesus anymore. And as soon as Jesus heard the words that were spoken, he said, because he could feel that. He could feel that grief. And that, that man, he could, God's touched with the feelings of your infirmities. He knows when you are low. He can feel that drop uh, in that man. And as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said unto the, the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. And he suffered no man. Then, then he went. He went with, with the man, Jairus, to his house, and he suffered nobody to go with him but to Peter, James, and John. And he cometh to the house of the ruler and the synagogue, and seeth the tumult, and he seen the people. They're all weeping and wailing. <laughs> the professional mourners were there crying, Oh, the poor Jairus. Poor family. Oh, the baby, the daughter was so sick and now she's dead. Oh, and it said, and when Jesus was come in, he said unto them, Why maketh she this ado? And why weep? The damsel's not dead, but sleepeth. And then those people, the same people, it says in the 41st, that were that were going, oh, next thing they're going, ha ha ha. He's crazy. She's dead as a door now. Ain't no hope. All hope is gone. You know, it said in the fourth of his, and then they laughed him to scorn. I wouldn't give you two cents for these type of people. Give me some people with some faith. Give me some people stand by me. They're going to pray. You know, the Bible says pray the prayer of faith and he'll raise up the sick. That's what God says. I believe that. You know, if, if I can't believe, if I can't believe what, what every word that's in this Bible, I'll throw it in the garbage can because it ain't worth nothing. But I'll tell you what I believe. It's been proven throughout the eons of the age and to the, to the centuries that God's faithful to his word. The 41st said, and they laughed him to scorn. But when he had put them all out, he taketh the father and the mother, mother of the damsel and them that were with them and entered into where the damsel was lying. And he, and he looked took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Telethiah Kumai, which is, which is being interpreted, Damsel, I say unto thee, Arise. And straightway the damsel arose and walked, for she was of the age of twelve. You know, when Jesus walks into that room, you hear the door, the doors were shut. She's dead. Friend, if you're still breathing, you got more hope than this girl had hope. The door's being shut. Jesus told Jairus, only believe. Don't believe what these people are saying. Don't believe what everything around you is saying. Only believe, and it shall be so unto you. Amen. You know, it's hard to believe God or even get God to move. Now here we're going to get down to some of the nitty gritty for a second here. It's hard to believe God or even get God to move on our behalf. We're not living right. You know, if we're not living right, it's hard, it's hard to believe God. I told you about that wall of condemnation we've, between, we've built between us and our God. You know, when you ain't living right. But the Bible says when your heart condemns not. Whew, it says when your heart condemns you not, then you have confidence with God. You hear me? You know, when your heart condemns you not, you have confidence with God. But, you know, we'd be as like this man said, Lord, forgive me. Help me. Help my unbelief. There's been things in my life that's, helped me, that's, that's hindered me from believing. But he said, help me. He was, God knows. He looks right through us. He knows exactly what's inside of our heart and where, what we mean. Sometimes we say something comes out of here, but that ain't what's in here. You know, truly. You know what I'm saying? comes out of here. You know, it's hard to believe God or get anything from God when we're not living right. God's word states that healing is the children's bed when we're his children. You know, that's, our, that's for us. He deals the bread out to his children. Amen. Thank God he healed sinners. He healed me when I was a sinner and that too at times. But I'll tell you what, it's promised. When you're a child of God, he, he'll deal that, that healing bread out to you. You know, in closing, I want to tell a story of a man who had an incorruptible disease. At a time when all hope was gone and the doors of his house, they were shut. And Jesus 
walked through the walls. A minister friend of mine told me this, told this, this story about how this man, and he told this story to this minister, and it encouraged him. And I, I, I pray that it will encourage you. He told about how he had an incurable disease. He had uh, a very cancer all through his body and such. And he told, I believe that's what it was. And uh, he, he, he told about how he was feeling a pity party for himself and he was feeling bad. And he was called upon, called upon the Lord to, to help him and such and that. And he said, a man walked through the wall with white, shining bright white clothes. And you know who that was. And spoke just a few words to him. He said, I, whew, I feel God. I want you to hear this. He said, you don't have any trouble. All you need is faith in God. I want you to digest that a little bit. You know, we humans, we think we got all kinds of trouble. A lot of times we, may, we're tr we make trouble of ourselves. But I'll tell you what. When you're walking with Jesus Christ and you know him, we don't have any reason to have any trouble. All we need to have faith in God. And just like Jesus spoke to that man, says, you don't have any trouble. He says, all you need is faith in God. You know, you don't have any troubles. All you need is faith in God. 